Amanda Bryden, Amnesty International, uh, New Zealand. Uh, just first a question on the new coalition. What's your uh, take on that? I think it's a really great uh, to have a coalition that provides a platform for all these different organizations to speak on Asia-Pacific issues and really uh, bring these different voices and an opportunity for different uh, communities and organizations to, to talk about human rights issues in Asia-Pacific. And of course, uh, Sri Lanka was uh, the topic of discussion today. Uh, what's your view on, on the discussion today? I think it's really good to uh, be able to have a look uh, in depth at what has occurred in Sri Lanka and what uh, alleged human rights violations and, and humanitarian violations took place during the war, but also to have a really uh, frank and constructive discussion about what can happen next and how you can use international opportunities like the Commonwealth Heads of State meeting to really push for some progress and, and some effective change. What can New Zealand do in relation to Sri Lanka? Well, I think New Zealand has a record on the international stage of speaking out about human rights and being a champion for them. And so it really has a good opportunity, especially with the UN Security Council bid, where it's taking a real principled stance uh, for New Zealand to speak out and take a leadership role in um, pushing Sri Lanka or encouraging Sri Lanka to take these effective steps to, to meet its human rights obligations. What are the most serious human rights abuses to happen in Sri Lanka? Well, Amnesty's had a lot of reports of enforced disappearances, extrajudicial killings, and a real crackdown on freedom of expression and uh, freedom of association. Uh, anyone who's been critical, especially in recent times as well, not just during the war, um, critical of the government and uh, anyone who's seen to dissent um, is, is at risk to, uh, from speaking out. But, I mean, what's really important is that we have an international independent investigation to really find out what occurred so that perpetrators traders on both sides can and all sides can be held to account. So what is realistic to achieve on, on a short a short term perspective um, in Sri Lanka? It's, it's difficult to say and, and often uh, getting accountability is a, a long road. Um, what we've seen from the resolutions at the Human Rights Council in Geneva um, in uh, 2012 and then in 2013 is a real step towards uh, uh, calling for an independent investigation so I really think that if we can maintain this international pressure and, and keep it up that that it will be a step towards uh, getting an independent investigation in the long run. Why hasn't much happened in Sri Lanka so far? Well, what we have seen, while well, there have been investigations, they haven't been independent, they haven't been adequate, and, and even some of the recommendations, the better recommendations of the Lessons Learned Reconciliation Committee haven't been implemented. And what I, um, what Amnesty sees is a, a lack of political will um, and a lack of wanting to um, admit to any violations or even to investigate them. So um, there's a real um, refusal, I think, um, um, on, on, on the level to assess human rights and, and to make sure that human rights are upheld. How do you view the situation in Sri Lanka compared to other uh, serious human rights situations around the Asia Pacific? Well, I think um, the Asia-Pacific region is one that has many human rights issues that are occurring. Um, often um, they are, are tied and interconnected as well. So what we see in the conflict in Sri Lanka is that we get um, a flow of refugees and asylum seekers into the region that then, because of the, the lack of protections in these transit countries for asylum seekers, that they then... Um, suffer from further human rights abuses and um, arbitrary detention and then even when if they manage to get to a country like Australia there's there's more violations going on so I think it's really important to see the big picture and see how often these abuses are in interconnected. Mm. And finally about the Commonwealth Head of State meeting, um, what's your expectation for that and uh, what you hope to achieve there? Uh, in terms of expectations um, I hope that there's 
there's going to be an international spotlight on Sri Lanka and that there'll be uh, the human right, the conversations about human rights and Sri Lanka's human rights record going on at uh, Chogham and that it is raised, something that is raised by the media um, and by people on the ground if it's safe to do so. Um, whether there's going to be any progress or not remains to be seen, but I think the more that we can maintain that international pressure and push Commonwealth countries like New Zealand to... Um, pressure Sri Lanka to meet its human rights obligations, then the more um, uh, we are likely to be able to see some progress. What do you hope to achieve with the new mm. coalition? We hope to develop coordinated action in relation to human rights issues in, in the Asia-Pacific region, which have some relevance to New Zealand policy and involvement. Mm. And what can you tell about the meeting tonight? Well, I think it's been a very successful meeting. Um, so it was a launching meeting for the coalition. We uh, sent out a number of invitations. We got a good range of groups here, had some excellent input and some very practical suggestions as to what we can do relating to the, um, um, the coming um, Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting to be held in Sri Lanka in October. Um, some of those practical suggestions um, uh, related to the fact that there is a real need for an, an independent international investigation of what happened in Sri Lanka um, in 2009 at the end of the so-called civil war between the Tamil and the Sinhalese uh, Tamil people and the Sinhalese government. Um, we also um, heard tonight that um, th there is a need to uh, Sri Lanka itself to be held accountable. And, um, and the, there was a resolution passed that because of its um, failure to front up to what happened in 2009, the Sri Lanka government should not be permitted to become a chair of the Commonwealth um, Heads of Government Organization. So how do you view the situation in Sri Lanka compared to other human rights situations around the Asian Pacific area? Well, I think um, in, in many of the issues there we are faced with the, um, the intention of, of subjugating minority or differently ethnic people to a central dominant government will. Um, in fact, we can't speak about that in New Zealand because our own history includes that. But currently, um, Indonesia is subjecting the West Papuan people to the same thing. The uh, level of atrocities might not be as high as those in Sri Lanka, but they are, they are similar assassinations and, um, and, and the, uh, the attack and burning of villages and all that sort of thing. Um, but Sri Lanka is the outstanding example in our region at the moment, I think, as far as that goes. And uh, the material that has been put together by Amnesty and others on the atrocities that followed the end of that war demand our attention and demand that we do something about it. Our government is in a position to do that, and so we have to uh, find ways to bring pressure on them to take that responsibility. Yeah, finally, uh, can you just say what role you hope New Zealand can play in Sri Lanka? New Zealand prides itself on its, its history of um, involvement in human rights activism. Um, we were part of the uh, of the original 1948 signing of the, U the, Uni of the United Nations Convention, uh, but at the same time, we don't always take uh, the uh, a responsible position in human rights groups, particularly when things like our trade um, and other such uh, influences um, come into the and come in, into into the situation. Um, uh, we we were slow to involve ourselves in in East Timor. We are currently not involving ourselves in West Papua. The fact that we um, haven't considered um, boycotting or, or the, uh, the Commonwealth Heads of Government meeting or bringing strong pressure on Sri Lanka shows that, that at, at currently, although our words may be good, our actions don't always follow them. So we really um, have to take a much stronger role internationally as an independent um, country on addressing these issues. Um, one of the things that worried me tonight was the fact that things like um, uh, the prevention of terrorism is being used to inhibit um, uh, action in Sri Lanka and it worries me that, uh, that many of our own very good human rights um, um, legisl piece of human rights legislation are currently able to be overruled by a simple majority in Parliament of things like our, our, um, um, our trade is threatened or also I'm sure that if our alliance 
with some of the uh, major dominant countries that threatened. I'm sure that we, will, we too would put our human rights aside. So um, we do need to, um, to front up to the fact as a country that um, we have very good human rights um, legislation, but um, we don't always live up to the, our, our best, um, our best uh, opportunities in following through that legislation. So Joan MacDonald, co-founder of uh, the coalition, uh, can you first tell me what you hope the coalition will achieve? Well, what I, I hope it achieves is that we'll all be able to support each other and all our organizations in our work for human rights in the Asia-Pacific region. And I think that g working together gives us more strength to do that. Uh, and we also find out a lot more about what's going on in the region as well. Yeah, so I think it's, it's really a very useful way of working together. So tell me what exactly has happened now uh, in, in the lead up to forming this coalition. Well, the reason we formed it was that um, we, the mem some of the members that are in this new coalition were part of the Indonesia Human Rights Committee. And um, the, the suggestion was made that that be um, disbanded. And we decided, rather than disbanding it, that we'd we expanded and incorporate all the human rights, all the human rights um, organisations in the region that were working in the region. So how many members are there of the coalition now? How many? Uh, do, well, there are about um, ten different groups represented. And uh, tonight's um, meeting was about uh, the situation in Sri Lanka. Mm. Um, tell me your view of the situation and what New Zealand can do. Well, I think that New Zealand, especially the New Zealand government, should speak out much more strongly against um, what's happening in Sri Lanka. As, as was said in the forum tonight, other countries that have behaved like that have been um, boycotted and told that they have to stop the human rights abuses and Sri Lanka doesn't seem to be um, being reprimanded at all uh, for for what's been happening, which is appalling. It's a it's a really appalling situation that's been going on for a long time with a very corrupt government in Sri Lanka, and the, and uh, they've been asked to do something about it, and they're just ignoring what the international community. Although there, I can't see great pressure from the international community, so I guess it's up to the human rights organisations to make a lot more fuss about it and hope that we can make a difference. Yeah. And of course we have the upcoming Commonwealth Head of State yeah. meeting. Mm -hmm. um, what do you hope realistically will be achieved there in terms of, of uh, uh, mitigating the human rights uh, situation in, in Sri Lanka? Well, what I hope is that the other countries that are attending the, me the meeting raise the issues about what's happened in Sri Lanka and, and ask them. Uh, well, I think that, they, that the resolution that we're talking about is asking that they don't continue as the chair of the Chogham until the next meeting. That means they've got two years when they've got a right that they shouldn't have because they're not, they're not obeying the international laws. So... Um, I would hope that the new the governments would ask them to, but I'm I don't I'm not holding my breath about it. Yeah. And what can um, human rights organisations and and groups like the coalition do to improve the human rights situation in Sri Lanka and and other places in the Asia Pacific? What we can do is we can do a lot of lobbying. Well, we've we've already written to. Um, Prime Minister and the Minister of Foreign Affairs about Chogham. So that's the sort of thing, one of the things that we can do. We can support each organisation on particular issues that they're working on. And uh, th there, there are always issues coming up tonight. The Philippines was mentioned and there's a lot of things going on there at the moment. So I guess that's another issue we can do something about putting pressure on our government and... and uh, about doing something about that, yes. I think I think we w one of our main jobs will be lobbying our government on uh, on issues that we're concerned about.